Hello, thank you for joining us today. Um, in this presentation, we will be talking about how you can use Aspire to securely provide uh, identities to serverless workloads. My name is Agustin Martinez Asho. I am a maintainer of the Aspire project um, and I am part of the HPE security engineering team. I'm here with Marcos Jacob, which is also part of the HPE security engineering team. Um, and Marcos will run a demonstration later in this presentation. Um, so let's go through the topics uh, that we will be discussing during this session. Um, we will first have a, a quick overview of how workloads are attested in Inspire um, in order to provide them an identity. Um, we will see uh, then uh, what are the challenges um, for the process uh, in serverless environments um, and how SVD store plugins can help in this situation. Um, and finally, we will see a demonstration of how um, Spire can be used to provide identities to serverless workloads, leveraging um, SVD store plugins. Um, so if you're familiar with how Spire attests uh, and provide uh, identities to workloads, you probably know that this, this is a pretty straightforward process where workloads simply call the workload API um, to get the identity. Um, but what happens if you can't deploy Spire agent in your environment? Um, one example of such situation is serverless computing. What um, usually happens in this scenario is that uh, an event um, triggers the execution of a function that runs in an execution environment uh, interacting uh, with different services. Um, and this model of having uh, functions as a service uh, is increasingly being used because of the associated benefits that it has, like the lack of the need of managing uh, servers uh, and the way uh, that you can easily scale depending on the load, um, just to name a couple. Uh, but the same characteristics that make it so attractive uh, represent some challenges. Um, this model where the runtime environment of the function exists uh, just to run the function um, doesn't play well with the usual way that you deploy Spire, um, where you have a um, Spire agent next to the workloads that call the workload API to get their identities. Um, so uh, in serverless computing, you can call the workflow API from your function simply because uh, you don't have it available. Um, and it would be very difficult to deploy Spire agent in, in, in the runtime environment. So um, we, we had to look at ways uh, to issue identities uh, to workloads without interacting uh, with the workflow API. Um, and we explored it different option for that. Um, one of them uh, was to have the function uh, or workload um, attesting directly to Spire server uh, to obtain uh, its identity. Um, we saw this pool model attractive for certain uh, scenarios, um, but at the same time, we found some challenges uh, related uh, with performance uh, and re reliability. Um, and the majority of the feedback that we got from the community uh, pointed to a push model rather than a pull model. Um, with that context, um, we also looked at how a push model uh, would look like, um, where SBITs are pushed to a platform specific stores uh, and the function would essentially uh, get the identity material from a predefined store. Um, in that way, 
the SB management is moved out uh, of the execution time frame of the function, uh, solving both the performance problem uh, and the reliability concerns around the dependency uh, on Spire server uh, that we needed um, to be available uh, to issue the identity. Um, so the SVD store uh, agent uh, plugin type um, was uh, introduced uh, with the purpose of being able to store the SVDs in a designated uh, store. Um, so let, let's have a quick overview at how the SV, uh, SV store plugin uh, works. Um, this diagram shows uh, a basic um, deployment of Spire, uh, where you have Spire server uh, with a data store um, that has uh, the registration entries. Um, Spire agent communicates uh, to that server, um, fetching the identities that are uh, entitled uh, to that agent uh, and keeps uh, the agent cache uh, updated. So um, uh, it, it has the SVDs uh, for the workloads um, ready to be uh, provided uh, to the workloads through the workload API. Um, what the new SVID store plugin type does uh, is to provide a way uh, to identify the entries uh, that you will uh, use to issue identities to server's workloads. Uh, and what this means in practice is that um, when you create a registration entry, you are now able to specify if you want to uh, store externally the resulting SVID from uh, this entry. Um, and this store action uh, is done um, uh, by an SVD store uh, plugin uh, that receives uh, the updates uh, from the agent cache. So when there is a new identity, uh, it's notified uh, and called. Um, when the SVD store plugin is notified uh, about a new identity uh, or an existing identity uh, that is rotating, what Spire does is um, instead of having that identity ready uh, to be fetched through the workload API, uh, it, push it, it pushes it uh, to a designated store. Um, and the details of how uh, the identity uh, is stored uh, in the specific uh, and, the, and the specifics attributes that each store requires are uh, specified uh, through the selectors uh, of the entry. Um, so, for example, uh, if you are using um, AWS Secrets Manager as a store, uh, you will be able to specify the secret name through. Uh, the selectors of the entry. Um, and this provides a pretty flexible mechanisms to describe the attributes needed uh, by each specific store platform. Um, so the AWS plugin will need certain things uh, different than Google Cloud or Microsoft Azure. Um, and can, uh, can be also used to describe attributes needed by a completely uh, different store mechanisms, like it can be a, a plugin to store um, the identity material on disk. Um, so uh, finally, we see uh, here um, that uh, the workflow running in a serverless architecture environment uh, can fetch uh, its identity from the secrets store uh, in the same way that it gets um, other 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 secrets. Uh, so, for example, an AWS Lambda function can get the identity from uh, AWS Secrets Manager uh, that was stored by a specific AWS Secrets uh, Manager plugin. Um, so, at this point, I will hand it over to Marcos now.
uh, that will show uh, a demonstration of how Spire um, can be used uh, to provide uh, identities to serverless workloads, uh, and specifically uh, in this case to um, an AWS uh, Lambda function. So, Marcos, please go ahead. Thanks, Agustin. Hello, I am Marcos Chacot. As Agustin mentioned, I am part of HP security engineering team. I am going to demonstrate how we can use Spire to provide identities in a serverless environment. We will see a Spire agent that is configured to use a speed store plugin. That plugin is the one that is storing identities as JSON on AWS Secret Manager. Each secret will be contained the DTD in the, the secret binary that contains the speech ID, the search chain, the private key, the bundle, and all the thread bundle that it related with. At the same time, I will demonstrate a Lambda extension. That extension is the one that is communicated with secret manager to get a specific set. And storing that binary is in perm format on this. We choose to use extensions because we configure it to start with the container and storing the material on disk. And when the function is called, it will be using the information that is there. This function is a very simple function that only did to do is to get the retrieved extra candidate certificates and returning them to the caller. So let's move to the terminal. I started a Spire server and Asian in advance. As we can see, that Asian is configured to use AWB Secret Manager and it is storing the, the secrets in this ratio. At the same time, the plugin is getting the access key ID and the second access key for my environment. We can verify that the server does not contain any entry. So I will just start creating the first one. Here is an entry that we will use in for the deep client and storing that, that uh, secret as DB secrets. Here we can see that the selector contains the plugin we will be using the variable that we will set in as ID, that is the second name, and the ID itself. It is possible to use the R if, if you, we want. As soon as I create it, we can move to the logs. Here in logs, we will see that the entry was created, the speed is updated, and it is propagated to the AWS. Here is the arm of the secret where it is provided and the secret name and what plugin we use. <clears throat> we can verify that the secret was created or updated just calling AWS secret managers the Skype function. So here we can see it was changed now. Here is the name, and an important part is that we provide a tag. The tag is Spire Speed. It is useful to define what secrets are managed for Spire and will be kept updated. I will create in another uh, entry for a second function we will use in. This function is called with, with client and I choose to put the, the second name with secret. At the same way as we did before, as soon as I created the secret is updated on AWS. But something important here 
is that this is a third word the same way that word log epic works. But that means that any time that a bit is updated, because it is rotation, because there is rotation or A3 entry changes and force the speed to be rotated, a new bit is provided to AWS or any uh, environment we want to to, uh, to export. So, for example, I can update that entry I just created. And I will add in a federation relationship. Here we see it is updated because the revision changed and it has a relationship. The same way the speed is updated and it is propagated to AWS. We can be, we can verify it, it the same way we did before, just calling the web circuit. Remember the time I did it. And here I can. It is application right now. It's got the same time as you mentioned. And here is the name. Okay. Now the spire side is done. Let's start the function. The function consists in two things, as I mentioned before. An extension that is the one that is fetching a circuit from AWS, and the function. As I mentioned before, the function is a very simple that we use to just get the speed and return it to the color. So let me just deploy it. This build an extension, building the function, publishing the, the layer, and that the layer is the extension I mentioned before. Here we have a spy extension, that is the name of it. And it's compatible with Python, that is in our case. Right now, and it is creating the DB client. Here you have the DB client. And here it's important that we provide <clears throat> the secret name as an environment variable. This is the secret that it is, it is going to use. And here we have the layer that will be running before. In this case, the Spire extension. And now it will be creating the web client. That is the very pretty the same. And we have the web client that have a role and have access to secrets that have its own environment and is have a relationship with the Spire extension. Okay. Now that it is done, I will call a very simple function that basically is going to call the function storing the response and parsing the response to get the certificates and the SPIFI ID it contains. So let me call it. My name. <laughs> Here we have the speech ID. What it means? The function call use get the certificate is provided for the extension and return it to us. And as a result, is that we have the speech ID we was waiting for. Only for this demo purposes, I add some logs that returns the um, certificates, the keys, and the bundles, and more information on this on logs. It is not a normal case, just for this case. So I will get logs. Here, it has the CFD we was waiting for. It expired here. The certificates. 
it contains executive chains, it contains a private key, it contains the bound. The same thing will happen if I invoke the web client, but there is a little difference. Here we can see the web as we expected, but the difference is in the logs because because uh, remember that for that entry we add a federated bundle. So here we can see that that uh, that client is getting the federated bundle too, and of course it's getting the spiffy ID we was looking for and the certificate and the private key and the bundle. So that's all. I hope you enjoyed my demo and it was useful. See ya.